Good evening, everyone. It is Kimberly, and we are coming to you um, with our broadcast from our workshop. I am with Unique Finds and Furniture Designs, and we are coming to you at 7 p.m. instead of 8 p.m. So we thought we would jump on here now and um, get started, and hopefully you guys can um, will be able to find us over here because I know it is an hour earlier, but since the time change, it felt like 8 o'clock was really feeling like 9 o'clock, um, and so I wanted to jump on here a little earlier. And we are continuing this set that we have been working on. Um, if you are following our broadcast, you know that we were working on this table set with the window chairs. Um, we started this on Tuesday or started the broadcast, and so we are here um, continuing that broadcast and following up with what we did there. So... Um, Tonight I'm going to be working on this bench. It's a farmhouse bench and I'm going to pull you down a tad so you guys can kind of see where I'm working. So I have come in and I put slick stick on this. This is a chop block bench as well. So I did sand it. I did um, apply, I sanded it and then I wiped it down with a damp cloth. Then I came in and I put our slick stick on. It's been on all day, so it's had time to cure. You know, it's been damp, so I did run a fan, so that kind of helps dry the product up as well. So I did run a fan in here to um, help that slick stick from to dry up a little bit on us. Now, the table uh, set is painted in the manatee gray, and we did do a, um, a faux wood grain on the top of that, and I will bring you over to the top and show you guys that. And we did apply, or I did apply, um, the clear coat satin on top of that after it had cured. So I always apply the clear coat satin to my pieces if I'm going to apply gator hide. Because that helps the gator hide, I feel like. Um, it doesn't yellow. Uh, not that I've had any trouble with gator hide yellowing. But some people have said they have it changing the tone of their paint. So um, in order to keep that from happening, um, and maybe that's why I've never had it happen to me, is because I do use the clear coat satin first always um, on my piece, and that kind of keeps the tone the same. Then if you apply your gator hide to a darker tone um, straight over your paint, uh, like a Bunker Hill Blue, Caviar, Midnight Sky, any of our deep toned colors, then you might would see a tone change when you put the gator hide on. You can do several things. You can add a drop or two of that color to your gator hide, or you can add, you can apply your clear coat satin first and then apply your gator hide, which is exactly what I do. So I just applied my clear coat satin, let it cure, and then come in. Now it is damp, so I would let my, my uh, clear coat satin set for a couple of days. Um, we've had a tremendous rain here in North Carolina. And so not only are we having the rain, but we're having kind of a crazy temperature change. So with all that going on, I did run a fan. And I am going to let it set because I do know it's going to be soft just because of the dampness in the air. So, um, so you know, in your area, um, if you're in a dry, sunny climate, like in Florida, you know your stuff's going to cure up quite quickly, and you probably don't have that issue. But as, if you're up in the northern states and you start, um, you know, start getting this cold, damp stuff going on, I'd let my cure time um, last a little bit longer. Uh, a lot of times, I don't take furniture out of the workshop. I do let it cure. I've got some pieces over here that we've worked on earlier in the week. They're sitting, they're curing. And I do that before I take them um, to market, if you will, or um, before my client picks them up because the um, possibility of nicking them or pinging them when you're hauling them and moving them is, you know, pretty great. So to save that from happening, I let my paint set up and get good and tenacious first. So um, I am going to paint the top of this bench. So this is a farmhouse bench. It is to match the Windsor chairs. Uh, so it's gonna be on the other side of this, but I am gonna bring you up for a moment and show you guys. If you're here with us, uh, let me know. Um, I can't see comments right at the moment, so I'm not sure if you guys are commenting. If you are, let me know because I wanna answer any questions you guys might have about our Dixie Bell paint products. Um, I can help you along the way as um, we do these tutorials on a regular basis. But I want to show you the uh, wood grain, the faux wood grain. I use the wood graining tool um, that Dixie Bell has. And we use, um, underneath this is slick stick, 
which you could have used a pink color, like a white or any other color, and then I came over with manatee gray over the top of my slick stick. And so you will see the white looking like the grain on this table. So it was a chalk block table, and I wanna bring that and bring you guys up and show you guys that. So if you're here with me, um, thank you for joining me, and I'm gonna grab my tripod here, and I wanna bring you guys in and show you what an amazing, uh-oh, let me hold that so it doesn't slide on us. Amazing job the wood graining tool actually does. Look at the effect on that table. I hope you guys, I don't have a way of hanging that um, tripod. So I'm just gonna bring you down the table here. So you can see the wood grain and what a lovely job it does on um, your piece. Now I did come over the top of this with a 120 grit sandpaper and I did knock it down so it's super smooth across the top. I like that for um, applying my um, top coats. So I did come in and sand it down after I did the wood graining effect on it so that it's nice and smooth. And then this table that you're looking at right now, that is the wood graining tool. Underneath you're seeing is the slick stick that could just as well be cotton. Um, or another color and you can you always change your colors up, but I really like the effect of the wood grain uh, The tool on this piece and so and now it's sitting with a top coat on it I can tell that it still feels it's not damp to the touch, but you can kind of feel that it's kind of cool So um, obviously it needs to cure a little bit more. So I'm going to bring you back on down so that is the wood graining tool that we use to create that effect. So um, I was demoing that on, what night was that? That was on Tuesday night. So um, you guys will never believe, I was carrying paint in my a little cart. I have a little green cart, it's called, it's, it's called some kind of carry cart. Anyway, I had it loaded with paint today. And so I am sore, let me tell you. And then with the, with the weather, carried it to my car and I was lifting it and it was quite heavy. So I lifted, you know, proper body mechanics in the whole nine yards. And when I did, I lifted it up into my car, had a raincoat on and the top of my Tahoe, um, it opens up like a hatch and not opened like this. So it opened up, well, it wasn't up quite high enough and I slammed my head into that trunk lid so hard that I felt it ricochet down my neck, down my spine, and across my hips. So, so I'm aching tonight. And then on top of that, we have this um, rainy, damp weather. And when you get my age, you start feeling um, all the arthritic things in your body. Decide to say, hello, wake up, I'm here. So um, forgive me for being stiff and sore tonight. Um, but it happens. We just don't, when we get my age, you just don't bounce back as easily um, as, as you do when you are younger. So enjoy it. I'm going to grab my mist bottle. One moment. Because I am going to miss this. My, I'm going to grab me a mist bottle and a, a cloth. So what I'm going to do here, this is slick stick on here. Yeah, I had to tell you that story. I mean, I hate to say that I'm, I'm old, that old, but I'm definitely am feeling it. So after this, I'm definitely going to find some Epsom salts and a nice hot bath. But um, I have the slick stick on here. And what I like to do is I like to take our sanding sponge and I'm going to knock this slick stick down. Um, it's pretty smooth already but I always like to make it super smooth so that my paint just sort of glides onto the product much easier. And since it, I use these a hundred million times over again and I never throw them out because it always looks like there's nothing here and that it can't do anything, but it is enough to just knock the roughness off of. So I just take it and you can hear it, just kind of run it across my paint and then that's what makes it baby smooth. I mean super smooth. And I like that better than that chalky feel. I know chalk paint is chalky, but I like it where it feels nice and smooth. So I knock it down and then put um, a clear coat satin over the top of it. That's just my preference. So I'm just gonna come in here and show you just how easy it is, if I can sand, because I am so sore. 
I don't really call this sanding. I'm just kind of knocking any roughness that's on it. Now I did paint the underside of this in cotton and the top we're doing in the manatee gray to match the table here. So that's what's on the seats. All the seats um, and the tabletop have been um, sanded just like this very lightly. Just kind of knock it down even with my paint before I put on my top coat. And so that's what's on the top coats of the seats is the clear coat satin. That's my go-to. I use the clear coat satin pretty much on everything. So I'm just going to take this damp cloth, or take this cloth, dampen it. And I know it looks like it's dirty, but it's not. It's clean. I've washed them. I just use them 100 million times over again. I got stain, stains on them from the paint when I'm doing the wood graining tool. And you guys know our paint sticks to your clothing, sticks to your rags, whatever it is you're using. Um, I use mine over and over again. So I just lightly wipe that down so that there's no dust um, between my paint and my product, always, always. And then I take, I have my flat, my very well-loved flat mini here. And um, I have a mini for... I'm just going to pull some of those, a couple of these in here. So I have a mini for my paint, and then I have a mini for my top coat. So I use different brushes for different things. If you're here with me, say hello. Um, let me see. Can I scroll one way or another to see if anyone's here with us? If you are, um, let me know. If you are just joining us, thank you for jumping on with us tonight. We appreciate it. We're glad you're here, and um, hopefully if we have any you have any questions for me just let me know and I will help you any way I can if you are um, having some questions about any re rehabbing any of your furniture so I've got my oval fl or my flat mini here and I am misting it let's see how fine that mist is so I use a mist and I do always start with a damp brush when I paint I always start with a damp brush we're using water-based paint so we want to always have a nice damp brush because it just helps your paint go on nice and smooth. So, um, hmm, can't tell with this phone tonight. I know the weather is kind of crappy out there. So I've got the manatee gray here. It's not going to take a whole lot. That's why I wear my grubbies because I always get a little bit of paint on me. So I'm just going to start painting over the top of this slick stick and I'm going to, um, match it to our table and I'm going to bring it down so you can kind of see you don't really see me as much as what we're doing here and so anyway if you guys have ever taken a tumble I've done last week a week or so ago I was out with the little dog and we were working out in the yard and um, I was working with the little we have a little uh, chewy fence I, I call it chewy from chewy.com and um, it's one of those little short um, removable pins, fences, whatever. It works perfect for our dog, the two little ones. And um, <laughs> I was putting it up, and somehow, some way, as my husband would say, wear real shoes, quit wearing your flip flops. But I got one leg over the fence, and the other leg got, or the other. Went to bring my other leg over and caught my flip-flop on the fence, of course. And down I went on my shoulder and my hip. And I'm like, I am trying to beat myself up. So, it's just one thing after the next lately. So, I was like, I better slow down. I need to go on vacation or something before I tear myself up. And I think I got family that's counting on a, on a Thanksgiving dinner here. So... I cannot put myself where I can't cook or pick up anything. So you see how easy the, I'm going to pull you in a little closer. I know you don't need to see me, but you can see how this product is going on. And you can see the coverage. Now, I like I said, this is Slick Stick here, and this is the um, Manatee Gray that I'm putting on. So this is a light gray. Driftwood is a tad lighter than the Manatee Gray. Um, some people like the gray. Some people like a little darker tone. It just really depends on your preference. And you can see I don't have a whole lot of paint in there. 
You see, uh, but that'll paint this table probably three times that amount, but I don't need to paint it three times, but I'm just saying um, a little paint goes a long way. Kind of hung on that end. Got a little carpet down. So I'm going to pull you in so you guys can just kind of see what we're doing here. So I'm just getting my paint on my piece. Paint this Dixie Belle chalk paint just goes on. It just glides on so smoothly. Now I did lightly sand it. You guys saw me lightly sand. So that too helps the process, helps your paint go on um, super smooth. And um, I'm just using a flat mini here. And I'm just kind of bringing my lines. I'm going to go on the other side so, uh, so that I can paint from that direction. And maybe that will, I won't be right up against the camera there. You guys can still see. And I'll come over off of this angle because I feel like I'm missing this side. So I will um, put the clear coat satin, a top coat on this. So I will knock this down. So if you see any little imperfections or products in your paint, that's a good time. Um, you can knock them out. And what you'll see me do is put this on and then I'll come back in and clean up any lines I might have. And I see a little speck of something. That's probably coming off my brush more than coming out of my paint. But I am painting out of my can. So it's probably coming more off the side of my can than anything because, you know, when you paint with your, your paint open and you're, you know, cleaning your brush off on when you're pulling it out of the jar and you're kind of rubbing some of the paint back out, you're touching the edge of the jar. And that's probably where it might grab and pick up any little already dried specks of your paint. That's possible. It's no big deal. It happens. And I can pretty much brush them out or come back in. And you see how long it takes. I guess for me, I paint. Come back over here and clean this up. So this is just a real quick tutorial on applying. I'm applying my Manatee Gray. And a lot of times, like I said, when I get done here... When I get to the end, just a little more paint right here. I had a little piece of something in there. And a lot of times, and see, I just wipe it on my pants because as you can see, my pants are full of paint because I get it on there. So I just come all the way down and back, all the way down and back, really, really barely putting any pressure on that brush. And that is going to fan out. Any little brush strokes. I have a lot of people tell me they think it's been sprayed. It's not been sprayed. It's just been, you know, I just come in with a very, very light brush. Barely touching the surface. And that'll clean up those lines if you have any lines in your paint. But it looks like I'll have to do it again because I see a couple of little specks here. Which, like I say, I feel like are coming off my brush. Let's do that again. Just kind of run it back and forth. And that pretty much is the bench. Now, the other things that I'll be doing to the bench um, for this tutorial is I will be coming in back in. Come back on this side here. I'm up against some things in the garage here. So, what I'll do is I'll come back in. Pretty much done with my paint. You see it doesn't take next to none. And it looks a little different, but it is the same, the same paint. Because we use manatee gray here, and we use manatee gray here, and it might just be the lighting because it makes it look a little bit darker when it dries up. But it does have a tendency to look a little darker, but it is the exact same paint. So once it dry, I know it looks, it really looks light on here, considering um, it looks more like the driftwood color. Grab my paint here. But it is the manatee gray. 
And you can see how it looks darker in the jar, but I think it's the lighting, the way the light is on it, because it definitely looks lighter in there on here. But once it dries, it'll darken a little bit. So it goes on a little bit lighter. It goes on lighter and dries a tad darker. And um, so once that dries, I'm going to come in and I lightly knock it back again and then once I do that I'm going to put some clear coat satin on it just like I did on the tops of these pieces so you can tell with the tone with the change in the lighting I think our lighting really makes things look different in here but anyway um, you can stay tuned um, if you have any questions for us just shoot them in the comments I'll be happy to help you and um, any way I can with any of the projects that you are working on and if you have joined us, we appreciate you being here tonight. We hope that you will join us next week. And since we are on this end of the weekend, um, almost here, uh, we hope that you guys will um, have a blessed weekend. And we will see you on the other side. Thank you so much for joining. Have a blessed night. Bye, guys.